Hey there, it's John from Heroes and Legends, and welcome to part four of our six-part Battle for Zendikar full set review. Today we're going to look at all of the red cards. So if you missed the first three installments, we do have a playlist on the channel. But we've already talked about all the white, the blue, and the black cards. Tomorrow we'll be back with the green, and the following day we'll get the rest of the set and hopefully get you ready for the pre-release. So if you're new to the channel, definitely a good time to subscribe so you don't miss any of the chapters. And we'll also do a pre-release primer at the end of the set reviews as well. So having said that, let's jump into the red cards for today. We start off with a Mythic Rare. It's a Come Firebird. This is a very good limited card. You don't mind paying a 4 for a 3-3 three, three flyer with haste, and there's the possibility that you can get it back from your graveyard with a landfall effect once you have 6 mana. So this is going to be very strong. The big question is, can this translate into standard? At this time, I don't really think so. There are some other Phoenix type creatures out there that I think are just better than this one right now and maybe post rotation in the future this one could possibly see a little bit of standard play but I think in general there's just better options right now for an aggressive red deck uh, so there it is it's still a good limited card though next we have a come hell kite and here's another example of a good limited card probably won't make the crossover into standard it costs six four 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 flyer which isn't super exciting but then the landfall ability is pretty good. You can drop a land and get to do a point of damage, or if you drop a mountain, you get to do two points of damage, and that's to creature or player, which is pretty cool. So you can put this card out, drop a land, it does two damage. Next turn, you're attacking for four, drop another land. Now you've already done eight damage over the course of two turns. That's pretty decent and limited. So I do like this card as a limited card. It is rare. You're not going to see it a whole bunch out there, but uh, it is fine when you do pick it up. Next we have a Calm Stone Waker, and before I get into the details of this card, let me kind of say, red's going to be a very interesting color. You're going to see that as we go forward. It's a very aggressive color, and black has a little bit of aggression to it, but red is super aggro and is really going big all in with small fast creatures which is very different from what a lot of the other colors are trying to do so there's definitely going to be a black red aggro deck out there in limited there's definitely going to be some synergies with boros as well with some of the allies and you'll see that as we go forward uh, but this card plays into that aggressive strategy quite nicely you're paying two for a two one and one of the downsides of playing aggro and limited or even in Constructed, is a lot of times you just run out of gas at some point. You just do a lot of early damage, you get your small creatures down, you do your direct damage, and then next thing you know you wake up and you're facing down some 4-4 four, four flyers, some 6-6 six, six creatures, and you just can't get any more damage across. What I like about a card like this is it uses the landfall ability to at least get you some 3-1 haste creatures, even if you do have to sacrifice them at the end of the turn. It does allow you to just get a little more damage on the board. It can surprise an opponent potentially as well if you play your cards right with this one. Uh, so this is going to be good in a aggro limited build. If you're not going all in on aggro, you're probably not going to play this card. Uh, but if you're in that build, it can do a little bit of work for you. Next we have Barrage Titan, and I really like this one a lot. You pay 5 for a 5-3, those are decent stats. And then at that point forward, you can start pitching your colorless creatures at your opponent. And that can get pretty crazy pretty quick, especially if you're in the mid to late game. So imagine attacking with like an 8-8 Eldrazi. You get 8 points of damage across, and then you can sack it for another 8 points of damage. It's like 16 damage right there. That's, that's crazy. So, I mean, I've played Magic Origins limited games where I've won with the uh, Hellhound just kind of chucking my creatures for one damage. I can't imagine how quickly you could win chucking huge Eldrazi's at your opponent. Uh, and they also hit creatures as well when that does become relevant. So this is a pretty cool card. It's got tons of versatility. If there is any kind of colorless deck out there in standard that comes from this set and i don't know if there will be or not but if there is it's going to want to play this it's that good uh, it is a rare you're not going to see it all the time in limited but it's going to be a real fine limited card when you do get it as far as other formats i can see commander also playing a card like this uh, granted when it does come up in the deck if you're playing a strong colorless maybe artifact creature and or eldrazi build this could be kind of nuts as well so i uh, really like this card this is super strong belligerent whiptail and here's a card that is decent 
as long as you have the landfall ability. It's very fragile. It's not always going to make your cut limited. There's going to be times where I might just have better things going on, or maybe I'm going a little more aggressive if I'm in red and I'm just going for smaller creatures and more direct damage. But if I have room for this card, it's not the worst thing in the world. I can drop a land, and if it has first strike, it can get in there and do some work. Only thing is, you're not going to have landfall every single turn, and with only two toughness, uh, this probably won't live super long. Uh, and at the four slot, maybe there's better things you could be doing. So not the worst limited card in the world, but it's not always going to make your deck. Next is Boiling Earth. This one's a sideboard card for limited, and you side this in when you're up against the token decks. You're playing against blue or green or blue green and you just need to get rid of those cyan tokens that type of thing so uh, this is fine you're, you're going to be glad it exists when you need it the awaken is nice kind of icing on the cake uh, but not really imperative with a spell like this this is just to clear a path and get rid of a lot of small creatures and deal with token strategies Next is Chasm Guide, and here's our first Rally ally that's in red, and there's a few of these. They're not quite as good as probably the ones that we saw in white, but they're decent. Uh, this one gives all your creatures haste, so if you just cast a large creature and you would like to attack in with it, this is okay. Uh, but to be quite honest, there's just so many better allies out there, in not just red, but in all the colors, basically. I really can't see myself running this one unless I was just desperate just for another ally to get the trigger off of it. Uh, so if I'm desperate, yeah, I might run it. But for the most part, I'm probably going to skip this particular ally. Crumble to Dust. Now, this is not a very good limited card, obviously, <laughs> because even though it does deal with the land, and you could sign it, sign it in to deal with a problematic man land, I'm sure that will certainly come up. But for the most part, it's not doing a whole bunch for you in limited. What this is really for is constructed formats. Quite honestly, I don't know if we'll see a ton of play in standard right now. I just think the standard mana base is very diverse and just very consistent. That this isn't going to like disrupt your opponent's mana base to the point where they can't play the game or anything like that. Especially at the 4 drop. Perhaps you could see some sideboard play in modern with this. Because this does kind of hurt Valakut decks. It does hurt Tron decks. And if you're up against one of those decks, you know, maybe having a one or two of, of this in your deck isn't the worst thing in the world. Uh, so I could see this showing up in modern sideboards probably more than anything. Dragon Master Outcast. Now this is a reprint. This was originally from World Wake. And it's a pretty cool reprint considering the value of this card was starting to creep up there. It sees a lot of play in Commander, like in Dragon decks, stuff like that. As far as its limited viability, it's a fine limited card. You do want to be smart about how you play it, though. You don't want to throw this down on turn one and make it a lightning rod for five turns until you can get six land out. You basically want to wait till you're at the point where on your next upkeep you're going to have six land and then hopefully get the dragon and it just only has to survive the one turn. It's incredibly fragile, but at the same time it's also incredibly cheap. It's not a huge commitment if things go wrong with this card. So it's more than worth it to play it in limited. I think it's too fragile for standard and for other constructed formats, but like I mentioned, before it is a pretty fun uh, card and commander for a dragon build. Fire Mantle Mage, and here's another rally card. This one, when a ally enters the battlefield, your creatures get menaced. So this is a little better than the last one we saw. This may be one of the better red ones. It just kind of gives more evasion. So I definitely could see playing this in a Boros build with allies and just being able to pump your allies and then give them menace and you just get more damage across. This is pretty cool in that build. Now, obviously, if you're not playing allies, this is not a very good card at all. <laughs> I hate to pay three for a 2-2. Two -two. I mean, this is obviously a Grizzly Bear with upside. And when it comes in, it does give you Menace for a turn, and that's not nothing. And that could be important in an aggro deck as well. Uh, but if you're not going super wide, skip this one. If you're going with, say, bigger Eldrazi's or that sort of thing, then this isn't going to do a whole lot for you and your deck. Goblin War Paints, and this is a reprint, of course. I'm not super excited about this card. As far as auras go, this isn't the worst one in the world because it only costs two. It does give haste, which is kind of a nice little bonus. But I just have a hard time playing auras in limited just because it's so easy to get two for one. You know, your opponent's just holding out that instant removal and they're waiting for you to do something like try to put a aura on a creature and then boom, that's that. So unless the creature has hex proof or something like that, auras can be pretty painful in most cases. I do like auras that can trip or give 
give you some sort of uh, extra ability so you get some value out of them that is instant but something like this doesn't really do that unfortunately so there are times you might want to sideboard it in to kind of increase your pressure especially in an aggro matchup but you know for the most part this is probably a skip for me Kozilek Sentinel. This one's interesting. This is a very cheap, good blocker. As far as it's getting plus one, plus O oh is concerned, I don't think that's very relevant since it doesn't have evasion. I mean, it's a nice little bonus, but I don't think it's going to do much for you. This is more or less something you want to put down as a blocker. Maybe you sideboard this in if you're playing against the black, blue, and jest deck and you have a lot of small and jest creatures coming at you early game. This is a way to kind of stop them from milling you to make room for their processors later and also a way to just kind of block Block anything that's small and aggro. Probably not starting the game out with this in, in my main deck, but I could see boarding this in in some situations and limited. Lava Step Rider. This is a pretty good aggro card. I do like this a lot. It's a one drop. You get a one two, but you very quickly can start pumping its toughness plus two plus O, and it just kind of wrecks havoc with your opponent's early game because you go in there, you're holding the mana back, and they're going to be hesitant to block. You can get in there for some significant damage with this one drop, or you can just simply get in for one damage and then cast another aggressive creature, and this is pretty good. It's also good in the late game for taking out a big creature when you have lots of expendable mana so i like this one a lot again only if you're playing the aggressive build if you're playing something that's a little more slow and controlling this isn't going to be quite as good for you it won't do as much but if you're just keeping the pressure on this is decent and limited McKindy Side Runner, and here's another one of those just super aggro cheap cards, and that's, I guess my question with this set is, what is this going to play like? I feel like red, and especially maybe red black archetype, it's just going to be very aggressive and it's going to feel a lot faster than maybe some of the other archetypes. And I just hope it's more balanced than Dragons of Tarkir. When you play Dragons, especially when you play with Fate Reforged, just felt like you were doing it wrong if you weren't playing black or red a lot of the time it's just it was so much faster you could kill your opponent before they could get to their dragons or whatever else they were trying to do so i kind of hope that's not the case with this set i, I there's definitely a lot of possibility for beatdowns here <laughs> and i just hope if you have all these other big cards there's enough ways to slow down the game and combat against this but I guess we'll see. And, uh, you know, here's another card that goes with that aggro strategy. It's cheap. You're paying two for a 2-1. And then the landfall gives you a nice little bonus of being able to pump it further. And it has trample on top of that. So pretty good. It's decent common. Uh, on its own, it's not great. But you just combine it with a bunch of other aggro creatures and it gets overwhelming quickly. Molten Nursery. I don't love this card. I mean, it does hit creature or player, which is pretty cool. But when you play this, you're kind of taking a turn off to get it into play. And then at that point, if I had a whole lot of colorless spells that I was going to play, yeah, that might consider putting it in a limited deck. But for the most part, the consistency-wise, I just don't know if this is worth taking a spot in my deck, especially at the three drop. Uh, this one isn't super exciting to me. Uh, there's probably ways to abuse it, but notice it is cast colorless spell and not, for example, when you get a token or something like that, that might have made it a little bit better. Next is Nettle Drone, and this basically has one purpose. You throw this into your aggressive deck to get those last few points of damage across once your opponent's got their shields up and you can't get your small creatures across anymore. So it is a very niche role, unless you're going super all-in on aggro and probably not playing this. And on top of it, you also have to have a fair amount of colorless cards to feel like you're, this is going to do some actual damage. So... It's not super expensive. It's not a huge commitment. If you're in aggro and you have some colorless cards, play it. If you don't, obviously skip it. Undo Champion. Here's another rally. Uh, this is an ally, Minotaur. And he's got a decent body, so take away his rally effect completely, and he's a summit prowler. I got no issue with that whatsoever. Paying four for a four three, we saw summit prowler was very good and limited in the cons block. I think this will be very good here as well. On top of that, it's an ally, and he, his ability is he grants all your creatures trample. So that's pretty cool too for getting some extra damage across, especially if you're in the white and red Boros build with a lot of other allies. Pretty cool card. I do like this one a lot for limited. 
Outnumber. So I like the fact this only costs one. Now granted, it's a little bit contingent upon how many creatures you control, how much damage you can do, but still, it's an instant for one. Even if you only have two creatures out, doing two damage to something at some point is going to be relevant. And obviously, at some point in the game, you're going to have more than two creatures out. So this is real good. I like the fact this is common. It's one. It's instant. This could be really strong and limited. I don't know so much about standard because it is a little too contingent on creatures, but if you have a strong creature deck, like maybe that ally deck, for example, might be able to run something like this, or if there is like a Rally the Ancestors ally deck out there, some something along those lines, maybe it sees a little standard play. I'd keep an eye out on this one. Processor Assault. So <laughs> this card, if you don't have the ability to ingest or at least exile something, <laughs> this is a dead dead card in your hand, truly a dead card. So that's the risk you take when playing it. But if you're confident that you have enough ways to exile some of your opponent's cards so that you can use this ability, it's real good. Because I'm only paying two. Now granted, it's sorcery speed, but it's only two. And I can deal five damage to a target creature. It's pretty significant. So again, know your deck. If you feel like it's going to be a dead card a high percentage of the time, don't run it. If you feel like you can definitely get some cards exiled, then in that case it becomes very good and limited. Radiant Flames. Now this is probably my favorite of the Converge cards. I think this is maybe the best one out there. It's sort of like Anger of the Gods if you actually have three mana of different colors to pay for this. But even if you have one or two colors of mana, there's times where that's going to be relevant for you. Uh, I like this a lot. I think this is going to be a fine card to use in limited, depending on your deck, of course. If, you, if you're going super aggro, you don't want this because it's going to destroy your stuff, maybe more so than your opponent's stuff. But if you're playing a slower, more controlling game, this is going to be fantastic in limited. This will see standard play, I have no doubt. This will replace Anger of the Gods in sideboards. They're trying to deal with a lot of creatures and are playing a slower game. So definitely keep an eye out on this one. It's a rare. You won't see it all the time but it's going to get a lot of play. Reckless Cohort. Okay, I don't like this card at all. So this is the first time in a long time I think I've seen a Grizzly Bear with downside, and here it is. Now, granted, it is an ally, so it's not a complete downside. That alone will tra trigger rally effects, so you can't ignore that. And if I'm really desperate for rally effects... I might run this card, but for the most part, I just can't see myself running it in 99% of deck builds. Uh, I'm getting a 2-2 two, two for 2, and it has to attack every turn unless I have another ally. <laughs> I don't know. It just doesn't feel real good to me, uh, this one. Retreat to Valakut. So this is another one of the retreats. The retreats have all been super powerful, super pushed. This one is good in the aggro deck because it can make a creature unable to block and it also can pump a creature depending on which is more relevant for you. Uh, so this is fine in aggro. This one maybe out of all of them feels the most niche though. If I'm not playing a super aggro build, I'm probably not running this where the other retreats I feel like are almost always runnable in almost any other deck. So this might be the least exciting of the bunch, but it's still pretty good. and I can see myself playing this definitely in an aggressive deck. Rolling Thunder. Now, this is a reprint. This is from the Tempest block, and this card is pretty crazy. If you ever played with it in the past, it can do some work. Basically, it's a fireball, but it costs two red and an X instead of one red, but you don't have to pay extra mana to split targets, so that's pretty awesome. You basically just pay your two red and then pump X and just destroy as many creatures that you can and or hit opponents with it. So this is awesome. This is going to be an easy include in limited. It's at the uncommon slot, so you're going to see it show up frequently, which is pretty interesting. You're going to have to play around this card, and I think it's good enough for burn or aggressive decks and standard to use as well. This is a phenomenal card, and it's going to see a ton of play. This is also the first time it's really being introduced into the modern environment, and again, I could see it making its way into burn decks in modern as well. Serpentine a Spike. Good limited removal. It's expensive. It's going to cost you seven, but it's really going to have a big effect on the board doing two, three, and then four damage to different creatures. And it also exiles them as long as they die. So that's kind of cool too, because it helps with your processors and that strategy. So yeah, it's a little expensive, of course, to cross over into constructed formats, but this is going to be really fine and do some work for you in limited. Shatter Skull Recruit. 
Another good limited creature. I mean, not really lighting any fires as far as things in constructed go or anything like that, but it is an ally, so that's a big deal. It does trigger those ally rally effects. But paying five for a four four and menace, shoot, yeah, that alone I would do in limited and feel pretty good about it. It's that common. This is gonna be a good card to pick up just to kind of complement and be maybe the high end of your curve for that Boros ally deck. And you'll have a pretty good uh pretty good build, I think, with that. Next is Stone Fury, and this is an instant you're gonna have a minimum of five lands, so it's gonna do some pretty hefty damage and limited and later in the game it's going to do even more damage so i do like this card a lot it's pretty powerful removal spell at instant speed it's a tad expensive the price itself might keep it out of standard in most cases but uh, good limited removal sure strike and this is another nice combat trick and i'd like running a couple of these in my deck when i'm playing limited this is maybe the best combat trick i've seen maybe even seen in a while to be quite honest only costs two you can put it down at instant speed give me a creature plus three and a first strike it does a couple things first off it's awesome on the defensive you're going to be able to take out a creature that's coming into attack or just doing three extra damage to your opponent. I mean, it's kind of like a giant growth in that regard, and giant growth is very powerful. So uh, I really like this. Really, really good combat trick for limited. Touch of the Void. And, okay, here's your new lightning strike. It's not super exciting. It costs three instead of two. Uh, yeah, if the creature dies, it does get exiled, so it's going to help your processors, but uh, the worst part of this whole deal is it's at sorcery speed. <laughs> so, yeah, there it is. It's common, so you'll see them. I guess that's good. Uh, let's face facts, though. You're doing three damage to target creature or player. You're still playing the thing, so you're going to play it in limited. It's probably still going to see standard play. <laughs> um it's going to replace lightning strikes and the decks that need lightning strikes. It's just a bad, a real bad lightning strike. Until something better comes along, though, it's pretty much all we got. Tunneling Geopede. And here's another card that complements the aggressive deck. You pay 3 for a 3 2, so those are pretty aggressive stats. And then on top of it, the landfall lets you do damage to an opponent. Now, it doesn't let you hit creatures. But this is really, again, for that late game when aggro is kind of pittered out and you're just out of gas and you just need to get those last few points of damage across. This is going to help you do it. Uh, so it's going to be good in the aggressive build. Again, probably not used in a lot of other builds, but if you're going all in on aggressive, this is okay for you. Turn against. I like this one. Now, this is a Active Treason effect. Now, it costs five, you say to yourself. Well, that's more expensive than Active Treason. But to take a closer look, it actually is an instant. So, they usually don't do Active Treasons at instant speed very often. You see them occasionally. I think there was a creature that also Active Treason that you could play for Flash at one point not that long ago. I can't remember for sure. Uh, but what I remember is Ray of Command, which used to be a blue, basically, Active Treason, uh, or similar to it anyway, uh, that was back in the ice age and tempest days so that goes way back but what's cool about this is you can use it your opponent attacks in you can steal one of their creatures they're attacking with block the other creature with it and you just get some crazy value so it's awesome it can cause blowouts it can really surprise your opponent and then on top of it you can still use it like a regular act of treason if you just want to go in and get more damage you can steal one of their creatures go in and, and attack with it and there's some really nice uh effects to help sacrifice the creatures especially in black black's got, black's got some really nice sack effects so you can steal a creature use it sacrifice it get another effect so that's all in play as well so this card it's uncommon you'll see enough of it floating around for sure in limited great limited card it's got tons of versatility it's going to a lot do a lot of stuff for you You're going to have to play against this card if your opponent's got open mana and this can be a tough one this makes combat very difficult to plan out Velikut Invoker. And here's another good aggressive card. I like this a lot. You're paying 3 for a 2 3, so not super exciting aggressive stats. But then in the late game, again, when I'm stuck and I can't get those last few points of damage across, this guy's great because I can just spend 8 mana and do 3 damage to target creature or player. So he just starts throwing lightning bolts around, basically. Now it's expensive, but the whole concept of this card is you've already done most of your damage in the early stages of the game. So again, you're not always going to run him. He's going to be more of an aggro build card uh, but if you're playing aggro and you're all in on it this will be pretty good for you Velcute Predator 
Now this one is not as exciting to me. It's got a good landfall ability that's giving it plus two plus two and it only costs three. So again, I I will play this in an aggressive build. I wouldn't be opposed to it. But depending on what other cards I have, it might not make my cut. The my main problem with this one is it costs three for a two two and those early stats are not super good and then yeah i play a land it's a 4-4 but it doesn't have evasion so uh, yeah if i'm super aggro I'll, I'll run it but if i'm doing most other things i may skip this one vestige of emerald so this one eh, again not very exciting it costs four for a three four okay it is trample that's great, <laughs> you know. Uh, it's not really doing a whole lot. I mean, if you need a creature in the four slot, it's a creature for your four slot, but for the most part, I'm probably going to skip this one. Next, we have Vile Aggregate. I really like this one. It only costs three, and it's got five toughness, so that's pretty awesome. And then its power is equal to the number of colorless creatures you control, and it has Trample and Ingest. So there's a ton of stuff going on here for three mana. I love playing the cards like this. This will go really well in black and red, and you have a couple of those really cheap uh, colorless and just creatures that you put down and this thing just starts to get bigger it can go in it can trample it can hit for more in jest and it just does really a great job of getting the, the processors more powerful in late game and there's some good black processors so yeah definitely can see this in a black red build uh, black and red i think is going to be pretty strong it just feels like there's some good synergies there and it seems like it can be very aggressive if you select the right cards Next is Volcanic Upheaval. That's a stone rain, going to cost you one more, but yeah, it's an instant. What's nice about this, though, is it's going to take care of Awaken lands, and it's going to take care of man lands for the most part, except maybe the Hexproof one. Uh, but it's not something you're probably going to start your limited deck with. This is more of a sideboard card when you run into an opponent that's going all in on those strategies uh, just a regular land destruction at four i don't think it's going to do enough in most cases especially in this set where there's a lot of ways to ramp and bring in extra land and stuff like that it just doesn't seem too exciting to me uh, but if you use it as pinpoint removal for a creature for example a land that's been awakened it's very good so Keep, the, keep an eye on this. Don't forget it's in your sideboard. It definitely will do some work for you at some point. As far as standard goes, not really going to do much there unless there is a man land that just becomes super powerful in the metagame. In that case, it could become a sideboard card. Last card of the day is Zada Hedron Grinder, and this card's awesome. This will be great in that Boros Ally build, and it costs 4 for a 3-3. Three, three. Those are fine stats and limited. And then on top of that, anytime you cast an instant or sorcery card that affects him, you get to copy it for all your other creatures. So it's kind of like an, a rally effect that just keeps giving, which is pretty cool. So a couple things with this card. You... First off, want to have some instants and sorceries to bolster your creatures. That's kind of important. But at the same time, it does have an ally trigger. That might be good enough in some cases, to be quite honest, if your deck's strong enough and has a real good core rally build to it. Uh, so good card for limited. As far as other formats go, I don't really see it doing a whole lot in, say, standard or anything like that. I don't think there's enough of a incentive to kind of build around this at this point in the metagame uh, but i can see this being a really cool commander card and perhaps a good commander it doesn't cost really that much to run and then you could put this out and bolster a lot of small aggressive creatures could be cool really cool commander build that i like to see so having said that those are all the red cards for today i will say red's a very interesting color it looks a lot different than the other colors we've looked at so far uh, tomorrow we'll be back to look at the green cards of course so i'll definitely see you then if you haven't had a chance yet if you click up at the top right corner you can check out our patreon page these videos really are made possible by patrons like yourself on patreon really appreciate it even a dollar helps to improve the quality and get these videos out to you guys in a timely manner so i do appreciate your consideration hey and as always thanks for watching please remember to like and subscribe have a great day hey thanks as always for watching these videos are made possible by viewers just like you through patreon please check out our patreon page by clicking on the top right down below we have more links to quality magic the gathering content and if you're interested in seeing trading cards open that aren't magic the gathering check out the link to our trading card channel heroes and legends trading cards thanks and have a great day